purpose of this video is to demonstrate one possible way you can take the results of your data analysis and then use that information to construct a written results section for either a research report or potentially a manuscript. Now I demonstrate one potential way to do this analysis summary in your results section. I would strongly recommend that you check with your uh, requirements as far as what should be included in the results section as you begin to embark on this process. So one of the first steps should be to organize the information that you have and begin to think about how you want to present your results. And one of the first things we need to do is be able to describe the variables that you utilized in your regression analysis. Which variables were predictors, which variables were the outcomes, and then be able to present descriptive statistics on each of these variables as part of describing your outcomes, as well as potentially providing descriptions of demographic information of your subjects or your participants. You then next need to be able to identify explicitly the reason for each analysis. In other words, which hypothesis goes with which analysis and vice versa. And so that needs to be laid out for your reader uh, quite explicitly and concisely. We then need to be able to describe and identify the precise analysis that was performed. And as you may know, regression has many different variations and many different types of techniques that could be utilized. So we'll need to be able to very explicitly describe exactly what type of regression we performed. Then we want to be able to report the results and organize them in a way that tells your reader exactly what it was you did, uh, why you did it, and then obviously uh, what the results were. And then it should also be pointed out here that this is not the area in which you offer detailed interpretation as to why things turned out the way they did. Your job is to basically give the what. This is the information that was gathered from the analysis. Okay, so as you're describing your variables, whether they be predictor or outcomes, it's really important we provide a detailed breakdown of the characteristics of each of these variables. In other words, how can we describe these variables? What were the measures of central tendency for each variable? Uh, for example, if you're using continuous variables, obviously you're going to use either a mean or a median, but if you happen to have a categorical variable as your predictor, you may need to then use uh, the mode or percentage to describe the breakdown of this variable. It's also important to provide standard deviation and confidence intervals for each characteristic. It's a, uh, this is usually best done with a table, so this could be a table describing characteristics of your participants, such as demographic characteristics, but it will also be uh, describing the values of your actual variables that you're using in your model. So what was the mean score for predictor number one? What was the mean score for predictor number two? And so on. So that your readers can get a good sense of the kinds of information that's being presented. And so an SPSS output will give you all of that information. So as each variable is uh, presented, you can get the mean, the confidence intervals, the standard deviation, and lots of other descriptive information. And that can then easily be transferred to a table that could be included in your manuscript, such as the example here. So that's our first step, is to be able to describe our, our participants our sample and also to describe the actual data that was collected. The next thing we want to do is, is very uh, explicitly identify the reason for the analysis. And this is especially important if we have multiple analyses within one paper um, or multiple analyses that was done on, on one data set. So the reader should be able to, to very easily follow along with which analysis goes with which hypothesis. So we need to, to provide that quick rationale for the analysis that we're doing. So I have a couple of examples here. Uh, in order to determine the relationship between three predictor values and the outcome of fitness level, or the goal of determining the ability of age, education, and sex to predict job satisfaction was explored by performing. And so this way we, we give the reader an idea of what the goal of the analysis is, uh, what hypothesis it is we're attempting to answer, and then they can be able to judge whether or not this was an appropriate uh, way to, to reach that goal. Okay, the next thing we need to do is identify explicitly what type of analysis that we did. So the first question you should always ask yourself is, what analysis did I do? 
So an easy answer would be, well, I did a standard multiple regression. But what helps that and what makes it even clearer to the reader exactly what was being done is to also include what the, the independent or predictor variables would be and then whatever your, your outcome or dependent variable is. So we can kind of add on to that first example sentence and say a standard multiple regression was performed to assess the ability of age and stress level to predict quality of life. So now I not only know exactly what type of analysis was done, but what variables were used to perform that analysis. And so again, we get a lot more information to our reader in a very concise way. Okay, and then the next piece of the puzzle is actually reporting the data analysis results. So a few things need to be included in your narrative description of your results. Uh, indicate if assumptions for the test are met. And different types of regression have different types of assumptions. And so you'll need to indicate that not only did you assess for whether or not the assumptions were met, but you may also want to indicate uh, your criteria for deciding the assumptions were met. The next thing we need to do is report uh, most regressions uh, will have an F test to determine the statistical significance of the model. So we want to make sure we're reporting the degrees of freedom the actual test statistic value, the p-value, and then uh, interpret that for the reader to indicate if you're considering that result to be statistically significant or not. We also want to make sure we're including the coefficients that are generated as part of the output from a regression model. And again, uh, when we're looking at our SPSS output, the main tables we're interested in are the model summary table, uh, the ANOVA table, and then the coefficients table. All the information that we're talking about here are, are typically found in those, in those three tables in an SPSS output. So the coefficients that we are including as part of um, the actual regression model would be found in the coefficients table. Uh, also the standard errors of these uh, values should be reported. We also want to make sure we're reporting the R-square value or the coefficient of determination. This is found in the model summary table. And then if we did a hierarchical regression technique, we also want to report the change in the R-squared score uh, if we're doing that. And you'll see an example of how we will do that here in just a second. So to put all that together, I'll go through a few examples for you here to show how we did each of these steps, how we provided the rationale for the analysis, how we identified the analysis, and then how we incorporated the results in a narrative results section. So here our first example was with a simple linear regression analysis. So in my first uh, sentence I indicate the goal and then the actual analysis that was performed, including the independent variable or predictor variable and then the outcome variable of interest. I did that in, in the first sentence. The second sentence gives an indication of examining assumptions for this type of regression. The third sentence, sentence indicates the statistical significance of the equation as well as the F-score, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value. And then the last part of that sentence indicates the R-squared value, the coefficient of determination. Then in the next uh, two sentences, I, I explain the actual regression equation itself, including the coefficients. And then I also give a, a basic interpretation of how these two coefficients interact. So is we, uh, I'm sorry, these two variables interact. So is mean weight, or I'm sorry, is height increases by one inch, then mean weight will increase by five points. Four, three pounds. So this gives the reader again a sense of how the regression line um, interacts or produces the equation that we are uh, looking at here. So that's one example of how we can report the results. Now here's a little bit more of a complex example in which we're doing a multiple linear regression. And again my first sentence I, I give the goal uh, as well as the analysis that was done as well as the variables that were utilized. The next sentence addresses the different assumptions that are associated with performing a standard multiple linear regression. I then indicate 
the statistical significance of the regression equation along with the F score, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value, and then also the R squared is expressed. I then again present the equation with the coefficients that belong in, in, in the equation. And then also give some context as far as how the different uh, coefficients will be utilized in the equation by indicating how s the variable of sex is coded. And then again give kind of an interpretation of how we can uh, read the equation relative to how weight changes for each inch of height and how uh, gender impacts weight. And again also indicate that uh, both variables were significant predictors. In the last example, we use a hierarchical multiple regression, and you can see hopefully now the pattern. Uh, in my first sentence, I give my goal and my specific analysis that was performed along with the variables. The next sentence indicates whether or not the uh, assumptions were met. And then I explain, in the case of hierarchical reg regression, there are actually several steps in the analysis, and so I explain the results from each step. So I explain the results from step one. I then explain the results from step two. I then also give an indication of the coefficient determination. And then because this is a hierarchical regression and there are steps involved in it, I also present the R squared change scores and then the F score associated with that. And then I also give an interpretation of which of the two predictor variables, and this is in the last sentence, I give an interpretation of which of the two predictor variables seem to have a stronger predictive capability, uh, even though both were considered to be statistically significant predictors. Okay, so in summary, what I've done here is given you an example of how we can organize the results from a regression uh, analysis, and then in kind of a systematic formularic way plug out those values and information into a narrative result section. So again this is one way to do a result section there's lots of different ways to do this um, but I do encourage you to make sure you consult your author guidelines uh, as you construct this to make sure you're including all of the necessary information. So hopefully you're able to learn something from this video and good luck using these techniques in your own research.